Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about pull requests or PR. But before we jump into it, um, welcome to my channel. My name is Eugene. I'm an iOS developer. On my channel I talk about software development and iOS development. And I decided to invest a little bit more time into professional development for my software developers and people who work in tech, especially in, uh, in, in the times like this. So let's talk about PR. If you're completely new to software development and if you have never worked with a team, uh, let me go back a little bit and kind of explain how things work in large teams. And if you already have industry experience, so like that's like, you know, you know that it's going to be just a little refresher for you. So whenever you work with a group of people and you submit your code, normally you operate with a source control and that source control can be Bitbucket or GitHub or GitLab or Git, what have you. Um, and uh, whenever you work on your feature, normally you would create your, or your own branch and uh, make all modifications, all features on your branch so you don't break the code on the master or, or on the main branch when your application lives. And normally each developer will work on their own branches and then submit uh, merge requests or pull requests. So, and when that happens, when your feature is ready, you submit your code for review, your fellow developers should review your code or must review your code. They have to review your code, they have to look through it, and they have to approve it or deny and make sure that everything is working correctly and that your code isn't breaking anything. So it's a like pull request and uh, um, get in a nutshell. So let's talk about PR itself, how your PR should look and how you should prepare PR and how you should review PR because it is really, really, really important because a good PR can save you a lot of time in the future, can catch a lot of bugs, can catch a lot of smelly code and uh, can improve your um, uh, the quality of the code base in general. So let's get started. Get started. Let's get started uh, with how to create a pull request. And uh, I will not walk you through the like from my computer, like create pull requests and things like that, because. Um, it's really simple. It's really easy, and it's really it is pretty similar for like all companies and all control. So um, the mechanic to create pull requests is fairly simple. But what you put what you put in your pull request is really important. Again, it will depend on your company, on your team, how you create pull requests. But if you don't have really strict requirements for your pull request, I think it's really important to explain to people who will review your code what you have done, what is your intention, where you're submitting this pull request, um, how people should test your code, and um, what the feature, what the implementation that you're trying to achieve. So that's, like, that's, that's in a nutshell what should be in your PR, and it's really, really helpful um, to provide steps for manual testing, if it is possible, to test your feature, to make sure that feature is there, that be whoever is reviewing your code is able to verify that your feature is working correctly, that your code is working correctly. So that is really important. And of course, of course, if your company has a different, different standards, follow this, those, uh, those standards. But more importantly, more importantly, you should communicate what you're trying to achieve with your PR and what your code should do. So this is on you to communicate really clearly what you have done, what you achieved, and uh, how your reviewer should verify your achievement. If you are a reviewer, um, it's really important to um, 
approach your PR really thoroughly. And uh, it's a sir silver lining between uh, being uh, like too strict about it and um, just block PR in general for a long time and it's not a good thing or uh, being too generic They're like oh like the coat looks great okay like poop approve so neither of those things are good because if you don't review your coat if you just look at the coat and look and the coat looks good it's not really a PR you just like you just glanced at it like you didn't really do a good job on doing PR uh, verifying the feature and the uh, running the code in front of the works correctly because how do you know that code compiles how do you know that it didn't break anything else so it's really good to uh, run the code and make sure that it didn't break anything else on the other hand if you are too strict and if you're too rigid and if like if it's only your way it's probably not a good thing either because it will um, it will block the work of uh, like of your team. It will slow down your team. It will uh, it may create like really um, unnecessary tension between you and your coworker. So the best way to go about it, if you disagree with something or if you think that something should be done differently and you feel really strongly about it, you should really uh, talk to your coworker, talk to your colleague, and uh, make sure that you can uh, reach the agreement where um, and how things should be done. So because it's really, really important for uh, for the teams that we have quality code base, but at the same time, there's, there's more than one way to do things. And it's really important to agree on um, a mutual way of doing things, mutual way of building things. So I think it's really, really important. And um, another thing is really important is to, uh, to provide a, uh, constructive feedback so whenever you provide feedback for your colleague it should be actionable it should be done in a positive manner positive and respectful manner acknowledge that your co-worker um, they, they they put time and effort in in that work no matter how bad it is, no matter how bad it is in your opinion so they put a lot of time and effort and uh, they put together that PR so acknowledge this acknowledge that like yeah you you appreciate that work and then provide actionable feedback say hey change method a rename method B change this framework or change that part so people can understand what you really want from them it's really not helpful when you just start um, put a theory or like start a th like theoretically a state something like, well, in my opinion, it's not a good practice. Normally, I do X, Y, and Z, and if we look at this and that, and uh, then we can do it in, the, in a different way, and um, in general it could be done a lot better and a lot cleaner so you didn't really provide a good feedback for your uh, co-worker so your co-worker has no idea and can interpret your um, uh, your request for change however they can re interpret it so because you didn't provide actionable feedback so actionable feedback is really important as well as really and I gonna I gonna repeat it as uh, as well as respectful PR, as, as well as respectful feedback, because, you know, we all developers, we all have uh, our strong opinions how things should be done, but it's really important to communicate with each other and uh, achieve that mutual agreement how things should work. And uh, in really difficult situations, when uh, your uh, coworker is not, for some reason, responding to your uh, um, um, feedback or thing or insists on doing things that particular way, I think it's really important to communicate whenever possible, face to face, or maybe with a, like camera call or 
uh, provide like direct communication about that and maybe brainstorm how things should be done. So this is pretty much all uh, if about PR. Um, really important to for you as a p person who submits your PR extra communicate over communicate what you're trying to achieve with your code provide steps to test your code because not everybody can be familiar with the part of the code that you're working on and um, uh, more importantly provide um, in provide clear message what is in the intention of that code what you're trying to achieve what you're trying to do with that code and as a as a reviewer it's really important to provide actionable feedback it's really important to be respectful and it's really important to uh, if we you and your coworker are stuck on something and have really strong opinions about how to do things. It's really important to brainstorm the ideas together and uh, find a solution that will satisfy both. And sometimes, sometimes you have to kill your darlings, and sometimes you have to, um, like, you, you have to meet each other halfway. Like, maybe it's not going to be 100% your way, maybe it's not going to be 100% your colleague's way, but more importantly, that you deliver quality feature and maintain quality code base for your company and for your team. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, please tell me what you think about PRs and how you do PR. Do you do you provide like very detailed message in your PR or you just submit your PR? How do you review your PR? Do you run the code or you just look at the code? Uh, do you test that particular feature in your PR? How do you approach things? Because there are so many ways to approach PRs and uh, so many companies and so many teams do it differently. So I look forward to hear from you and I will see you in the next video. Thank you and see you next time.